This question mm-hmm. is from I'm a gamer on YouTube. <laughs> it's on the video of highly aggressive foster dog won't allow putting muzzle on mm. Betty. Oh, Betty. It says, my dog won't put his leash on and any other thing we get for him. And when we put a leash on him for the first time, after a very light pull, he started being very aggressive and sensitive. Please help us. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. <clears throat> Dogs getting dramatic about having leashes put on them. I'm no stranger to this. <laughs> <laughs> Waffles. Oh, waffles. Waffles was that dog. So I, I talked about this in the in the podcast episode of the first week with the little guy right here. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that in the dog, in, in nature, right? <laughs> nature. Nature. <laughs> Leashes, barriers, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They don't exist, right? These are mm-hmm. not natural things to dogs particularly when you look at something like a leash, right? That's why you see all these videos of these feral dogs and people catching feral dogs and they get something on them. They restrain the dog for the first time ever in that dog's life Mm -hmm. and they absolutely flip their fucking shit. They go bonkers. You know, they're back flipping and screaming and and turning into Cujo, right? (laughs) Because it's so unnatural. You're taking a dog that has learned its entire life, right? They could move towards things they like and move away from things they perceive as danger. Mm -hmm. And now you're telling them you can't really do either, right? You're trapped in one spot here right now, right? And what we see is we see the dog resist it for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. Or some dogs, I should say. We see them resist it for the first time. So in the case of this guy right here, he's talking about his dog. He puts this leash on the dog, and anytime he feels any tension on it, anytime he feels that restraint and is reminded of that restraint, he gets very aggressive, right? Now, this is where you get into terminology of things, right? He's probably not getting aggressive, right? What he's probably doing is he's probably resisting and freaking out and trying to figure out how to break free of that restraint. And it's Mm -hmm. looking like aggression because it's a very highly amped up, highly aroused state of mind the dog is in. And they're probably trying to use a combination of their arms and their mouth to break free of that restraint. Yeah. Right? It's not aggression, right? Aggression, if, if we had to really define it, would be intent to do harm on a person or a dog. Yeah. This dog probably has zero intent to do yeah. harm, no. right? This dog is just trying to self-preserve and protect himself by breaking free from this restraint, mm-hmm. right? So keeping in mind that these barriers and these restraints and these leashes and all this kind of stuff are so unnatural to dogs— we have to be able to understand that we may see those things out of the dog and we have to understand why they're doing it and how to work through it, right? Mm. So when I put a leash on Waffles for the first time, right? So Waffles was like 14 weeks old, something like that. Yeah. He had never been on a leash in his life, right? Um, you know, he was from some Amish breed or somewhere. <clears throat> and I put this leash on him and same deal happened. I applied a little bit of tension on the collar and I'll tell you, dude, he started freaking out like, yeah. I, like somebody was st- Dabbing him repeatedly, like it was yeah. the most absolutely blood curdling, <laughs> horrendous sound that I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> right now, most people when they'll see that, be like, "Oh my god, we have to yeah. stop, stop!" Yeah, right. Like we're yep. hurting the dog, we're yeah. injuring him. He's gonna hurt himself. This, that, right. Mm-hmm. As opposed to realizing all of that is just resistance. Yep. That's all it is. It's a response. It's a panic response to him not understanding that sensation, mm-hmm. right? It has nothing to do with him hurting, yeah. right, or being in pain, mm-hmm. right? So when you know that, you have the ability to either cater to it and make it worse, right, yeah. or coddle to it and make it worse, right, or you have the ability to get past it immediately with the dog, yeah. right? Likely... Knowing this person is on YouTube asking questions about when there's very light pulls, he starts getting very aggressive and sensitive, and we need help with this. This person has not pushed the dog past this point, which Mm -hmm. has never allowed the dog to get past it, right? Instead, probably he's tried it. It didn't work. He tried it. It didn't work. He tried it. It didn't work and caved into it every single time, which actually made the behavior probably worse. Reinforced it. Because it taught the dog that that behavior works, Mm -hmm. right? So... 
literally the solution for this is by getting him repeatedly feeling that sensation Mm -hmm. on a safe collar that he's not going to be able to slip out of, obviously, Mm -hmm. and getting him realizing that the fighting doesn't work, but giving way to it relieves the pressure, right? If you get into going back to our training guide that we created here, Mm -hmm. that's why phase one of our training guide with any dog that we work with is leash pressure, right? And what is leash pressure? I'll just read this here. The goal of this phase is to establish muscle memory of all the positions and commands we will be using with the dog. The goal is not perfection, just that we could relatively easily get the dog into these positions with minimal resistance. We'll be using a leash and prong collar in this phase. Obviously, our major goals are to be able to get the dog into a sit down, heel, come bed and thresholds with no verbal commands, just negative reinforcement using the prong collar. We're focusing on stability of the position before releasing the dog. Uh, If the dog is food motivated, you could use food during the process with a good marker and feeding in place before releasing. Move on to phase two immediately when this goal is met. Note, some dogs are not very sensitive to leash pressure, meaning you only get so far in this stage. Remember, we're not looking for perfection, only that the dog knows generally what to do when they feel this pressure and that we could fairly quickly get them into the position we are trying to do with minimal resistance. Long story short, we're teaching the dog how to move with the leash, right? Because a leash is unnatural. and mm-hmm. We need to have the dog understand how to move with the leash in order to train them and get past some of those hurdles, right? Mm-hmm. So very introductory stage of this is going to be what you're going to be doing with this dog, right? Mm. So leash pressure introduction. On a four to six foot leash, begin walking the dog around the room, letting the majority of the leash stay loose to give the dog freedom to get away from you and not feel too restricted. As the dog gets distracted and nears the end of the leash, come to a stop, apply steady leash pressure in your direction and release that pressure with the leash as soon as the dog begins giving way to that pressure. Walk around the room repeating this step until the dog is smoothly moving with the leash when they feel pressure, right? Now, the only difference or or the only thing to keep in mind when you're doing this step is that when the dog feels the pressure, you got to wait that tantrum out Mm -hmm. until you get them, until you get them to give way to the pressure and then you actively relieve it. So we're Mm -hmm. teaching them, we walk around. I apply pressure, dog freaks the fuck out, and I sit there and I wait. Yep. And I wait. And I wait. And I wait. And I wait. And the second they take a step forward, good. Relieve tension. Give food reward if you want to. If the dog is motivated. If not, just just do it with the leash. The leash release alone (laughs) is also reinforcing that, obviously. And you just repeat that over Mm -hmm. and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Until the dog starts understanding The freak out doesn't work. Walking towards it works. Because all they're trying to do is they're trying to relieve the pressure. Mm -hmm. That's all that they're trying to do. And you teach them that by releasing it when they do the thing you want them to do. And teaching a more productive response to it. Right? (laughs) So so that's really it in a nutshell. Right? Now, if you have a dog that's so hypersensitive to it, you're going to want to have the dog have a leash on literally 24-7. Right. Because I want to get them feeling that sensation all the time. Mm -hmm. I want them dragging that leash around and feeling the pressure and getting used to feeling it on their neck. Mm -hmm. Right. I want any time we need to move the dog anywhere, us to use the leash to get the dog to move with us so we can get past that hurdle quickly. And again, in the case of waffles, we were past it in like 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Right. We had a couple of major freak outs when I tried to get him downstairs, when I tried to get him upstairs, when I would try to get him outside to go into the car. Right. And we worked through it every single time. I did not allow him to win with it and because Mm -hmm. of that it's a non-problem at this point yep he's good with it there's no issue yeah you know so that's kind of the root of the of the thing and this is why our training program is structured the way it's structured a lot of people will say first do all this with food right if they're scared use food to get them to follow you use food to get them follow you and i'm Mm -hmm. not saying it's like the absolute worst thing that you could do but the problem is if you have a really food motivated dog and they just follow that food all day, they're never actually learning what the leash is. Mm -hmm. They're just learning to follow you. But then when you run into a situation where they'd rather go chase this squirrel or go do this or do that, and you have to use that leash to get them to move with you, you're still going to get that tantrum. You're still going to get that freak out because you've never worked through specifically that. So I try to work through the tantrum and the freak out, then use my food to reinforce from there. Right. Mm -hmm. Then once the dog starts understanding the leash as its own independent communication where we can get them moving with it and they understand giving way to it, you could teach them all your other positions. You could teach them your healing, your sits, your beds, your come command, your threshold, your downs. Right. You could then have that leash be its own independent form of communication that you could then use to train your dog. 
right? And that's why, mm-hmm. again, this is structured out in the way that it's structured. And that's why we use this with all the dogs that we work with. Yeah. And we have it outlined in the order in which we have it. So that's kind of uh, more or less the answer to that question. Thank you.